Okay, I've got my other router set up in the jig. I don't think we're going to have any issues now. I'm going to make two, I'm going to try to cut the circle out in two passes and then readjust for the inner cut and go from there. Alright, well my battery decided to die in the middle of that cut. Um, <clears throat> so I made both my passes, everything looks good. I was actually pretty impressed. I, I pulled a, away this uh, section of the scrap and everything looks great, but then it kind of started to, you can tell, it dug in uh, to this bench top. And I, I really don't care, this is just, this is basically waste material. So. Um, you know this leftover melamine. I'm not I'm planning on replacing it soon, so I'm not too worried about cutting into it, but um, Get rid of this clamp that I was using to hold it all down pull it away And there you go So that's one circle. That's the outer the outer dimension. I have to cut the inner circle now Okay, so due to the aforementioned shortcomings of this jig, I'm not going to be able to cut out the inside circle <clears throat> with this particular jig. I'm going to have to come up with something else. It just complicates an already complicated situation. So this is my mark, and the bit doesn't reach that mark. It reaches about this far in, which would make that circle too big. So, I'm going to have to come up with something. I didn't want to have to do a jig, but it looks like that's what I'm going to have to do. Well, I may be in luck. I just remembered, or as I was pulling out the pivot point, I realized that I can turn it around and insert it like this, and that should buy me a couple extra inches and give me enough uh, space to work with to, to finish that cut. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that gives me a lot more room. All right, so back out here. Probably right about there. <clears throat> All right, here we go. I wanted to make sure I didn't pinch that bit when I finally made that through cut. So, oh good, it was still attached a little bit over here. All right, so nice ring. Here's the leftover piece. I'll hang on to it because I might still need it for other parts. Might as well check the fit. I'm gonna reposition you guys. Okay, so this ring serves two purposes. It, it forces the uh, top opening of the cyclone to be more circular than it wants to be, 
and also it gives me um, a flange that I can attach the upper portion of the separator to once I have it built. So, um, right now I have a little bit of cleanup work to do. As you can see, the the flange is a little rolled, and I need to flatten that out. And so the best way to do that is with the heat gun. I'll spare you the boring footage of me doing this, but basically I'm just using these quick clamps to hold the plastic down to the ring, and then I go in with my heat gun and warm that all up until it conforms to the ring and flattens out. I took the rubber um, feet off of these quick clamps just so the rubber didn't melt while I'm heating everything up. And uh, so we'll see how it goes. I think it'll work out pretty good. Well, my strategy's working. I've been heating it up, and then I actually use this clamp to kind of pinch it, pinch it down, and flatten it. And so I just—it's just going to take some time to get all the way around the whole ring. And then I have that ring to do as well. So <clears throat> it's going to take some time. I'll check back in once I make some progress. Alright, I'm going to try to describe how I'm doing this. Uh, I figured out a really good method on getting this ring to flat out, flatten out this, uh, you know, the plastic portion to fold out into a flange. And basically what I'm doing is, I'm heating it up and I'm adding a clamp as I go. And then once I get to the end of the clamps that I own, then I start walking it down. So then I'll grab the next clamp and do that. And the next clamp, I'm going to demonstrate to you right now. So, I've already started here, and this is all you know, sufficiently flat. And so now, <clears throat> I'm continuing and I have this left to do. So I grab this and I gotta lean it up against my leg because it's a little awkward. Grab my heat gun, heat up the, the portion, just I'm working at it one little bit at a time. And I go ahead and get ready by pulling off this clamp. This area has already cooled enough to where I can remove the clamp. And so I'm heating up this area now with the heat gun. Whoops. And now I'm taking this clamp and just clamping that down. And I'm ready to move to the next one. Actually that one broke on me because it's a cheap Harbor Freight clamp. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. Heat up the next little bit, get the clamp ready. It takes a lot of shuffling around with your hands and everything, but this is the best way I've come up with to do this. Clamp that down, move on to the next area. So I just continue to walk this down until I get to the end of the circle. Once you get a rhythm going, it goes pretty quick. You can kind of tell how hot the plastic is by how translucent it becomes. Like this piece is already really soft and hot, so probably don't need to do too much additional heating to it. It's just a little unruly to deal with working on its end like this. Last two clamps. Here we go. So I'd say that this flange is sufficiently flat Ugh, for me to move on to the next. It's a little unruly. So I'm going to let this cool just for a few more minutes and then I'll just take all the clamps off and it'll be good to go. I'm just going to leave the ring on because the ring is going to live there permanently anyway. I may uh, staple it down or something um, because the way I have the rest of this designed, it will, it's going to actually interlock and so this surface isn't necessarily going to be making the seal. It's more of this corner that will be making the seal and hopefully 
that'll become apparent as I continue with this project. All right, before I get too carried away here and forget to film this, this is what I've come up with for the small end of the cyclone. Basically, I cut out, I, what I did was I measured, this is obviously not circular, so I measured the distance on the long radius and on the short radius of the ellipse, and I just averaged it out. I don't know if that's going to work yet, but I averaged it out, it came out to five and a half inches, and so that's the size of this disc. I attached it to a pole, and I just put a temporary little stand on it, and now this will sit on that disc suspended like a bell just like that now I'm gonna take my heat gun <coughs> excuse me and I'm gonna heat around evenly around this whole edge until it all kind of relaxes and hopefully it'll relax and kind of spread out and conform around this circle and I'll see how far off I am at that point but if I get it close to this dimension, I should be able to then build the outer flange and do, um, you know, on this end what I have already done on that end. Well, they got it pretty close. I used a band clamp on the outside just to kind of squeeze everything in. It ended up wrinkling what I, the work I've already done, but that's fine. At least now I know. Uh, how you know how big this outside circle needs to be so I can make a jig to clamp it so I can start pulling these edges down and I'm gonna continue to notch them like I did here because that really helps it flatten out all right trying to remember where I left off so this contraption is designed to maintain the integrity of the circle I, I squeezed it down I had a little bit of a collapse um, I don't know if you can see it under there. You can't probably, but it, it's folded under. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, <clears throat> because this is at the very end of the cyclone, and I want, I'm going to want the dust to fall into the um, dust collection bin anyway. So, I mean, it's not going to be 100% efficient, but it'll be pretty close. So anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm actually heating up around the rim, and I'm, I'm using my hands. I'm just, I've got some welding gloves <clears throat> here, and um, so I don't burn my hands, and I'm actually just pulling it up against the side with my hands because I can't get a good grip with the clamps on this ring. This ring is split. That's how I got it around it. I just, it's two half rings, and then... Um, these clamps are acting as a guide to hold the ring flat, and then this third clamp here is holding everything together. Um, and so it's creating the mold to which I'm melting this plastic. Um, and then I will come up with a way to make this ring permanent. I'll probably just glue some, some blocks onto it to hold it all together, and then this will become my mounting ring to the 55-gallon drum that I'm going to use as my dust collection bin. Uh, but that's way in the future. I got some, you know, I got a whole lot of plastic melting to do and and getting that right. And then I still have to figure out how I'm going to get the dust into the cyclone. So I have to design and build the the top portion that that ring attaches to. So, but anyway, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to finish up this ring, and then I'll bring you guys back to show you the completed project or the completed bottom ring, I should say. <clears throat> 